Next, we have Supervisor Mandelman. Dr. Tim Selig, come on up. Happy Pride, everybody. Happy Pride. Um, today, it is my honor, um, but it is a bittersweet honor, to offer a commendation to Dr. Tim Selig. After 10 years of service as artistic director and conductor, Tim is retiring this month from the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus. A conductor, singer, teacher, and motivational speaker, Tim has been conducting, the LGB has been con conducting LGBTQ plus choruses for 35 years. In addition to SFGMC, he is the conductor emeritus at the Turtle Creek Chorale in Dallas, Texas, where he conducted for 20 years. Over his remarkable career, Tim has conducted annually at the iconic Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center for 25 years. He conducted the Guinness Book of World Records' longest chorus concert, and at the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, he carried the Olympic torch as a community hero. Tim holds four degrees, including a Doctor of Musical Arts and the diploma from the Mozarteum um, in Salzburg, Austria. He's authored several best-selling books and training videos on choral technique, as well as a 2020 memoir, Tale of Two Tims, Big Old Baptist, Big Old Gay. An AIDS activist and HIV positive man himself, Tim's legacy in San Francisco includes the creation of the Artist Portal at the National AIDS Memorial Grove at Golden Gate Park, where names of chorus members lost to AIDS are etched along with other warriors lost in the fight against AIDS. Under Tim's direction, the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus has commissioned a vast quantity of music that is performed today by choruses around the world. These commissions have included composers such as Stephen Schwartz, Andrew Lippa, Stephen Sondheim, Jake Hagee, and John Corigliano. While at SFGMC, Tim was also instrumental in the acquisition and creation of the Chan National Queer Arts Center, which finally allowed the chorus to find its permanent home on Valencia Street in District 8. For those that may not be familiar, the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus got its start over 40 years ago in 1978 when its original 115 members sang just outside these chambers on the front steps of City Hall. One of the first of its kind, SFGMC was the first to include gay unapologetically in their name. For over four decades, the San Francisco Gay Men's Chorus has fought against discrimination and bigotry while also inspiring and unifying community through music. I'm excited to see what comes next for the chorus under new leadership, but it certainly will not be the same without Tim. In August, Tim will move to Portland, Oregon. In retirement, he'll get to spend more time with his four granddaughters, Clara Skyam, Eden May, Ivy Hope, and Cora Rose. Thank you, Tim, and congratulations again on your retirement. And now the floor is yours, if you would like. If I would like, he <laughs> says. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, geez, I love San Francisco. Oh, my gosh. I think I'm going to come here now that I'm retired. Every, I'm going to come back every Tuesday afternoon. This is spectacular. Who knew? We can tune in on TV. It's amazing. I didn't grow up in San Francisco, I'm sad to say, but I am very happy to say that my granddaughter is being raised here in San Francisco, and she's quite different than my three granddaughters being raised in Dallas, and we'll just leave that right there. <laughs> My first visit to San Francisco was as a 17-year-old in 1968. I was on a bus. I was on a mission trip with my youth choir from a big Baptist church in Fort Worth, Texas, and we were here to save the heathens. As we drove through Haight-Ashbury, I looked out the window, and I thought, oh my goodness, look at those happy people, happier than the ones inside the bus. They had bright clothes. They were playing tambourines and guitars. I was so jealous. But I went back to Texas and lived for quite some time, and it was two decades until I realized that I was the one that needed to be saved. And I came out. It was a difficult one, but that's the thing of not for today. It's, it's a long story. I came back often as a gay man, and every single time it was a sad affair to have to pack my bags go to the airport, and indeed, I left my heart inside. Oh, wait, you didn't ask me to sing. That was last week in City Hall, but thank you for that. 
35 years ago, in July, I walked into a room of about 40 men like me, gay men. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a gay chorus, but I was auditioning. I raised my arms, they sang, and I cried. I had never heard anything like that from people like me. On the front row was a young man covered with sores. I had no idea what that was. It was the first person with AIDS that I had met, and my life changed forever that night in so many ways. And then the big dream came true 11 and a half years ago when I was hired by the San Francisco Gay Women's Chorus to come to San Francisco. It was amazing. I came to a city that didn't just tolerate me or accept me, but absolutely celebrated me as a gay man, a really gay man, who one who is HIV positive, and it didn't matter. I didn't carry the pall that I had where I had come from. And you, this... This room is amazing, and you people are amazing. You helped us do all the things that Raphael mentioned. The artist portal is really my favorite thing that we were able to do to build a memorial to musicians, to singers and dancers from all over the world whose names are there. But also, after wandering in the, in the wilderness for 40 years, you helped us buy our first home, which in San Francisco is good. And we bought a four-story home right on Valencia. Please come visit it. Andrew Lippa, Broadway composer, we commissioned him to write a large oratorio called I Am Harvey Milk. In it, he, po he penned a love song to San Francisco. It tells the story of a young man terribly unhappy where he was in a small town. Could have been Harvey Milk. He says, I need to go someplace that gets me, someplace that lets me be me. And he goes on and he says, San Francisco, I am broken, but you welcome the broken to come and to heal. I was one of those. You in this room are the people that create this magical place where people can come and heal and thrive and be celebrated. So today I thank you. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the celebration and this honor, which I will cherish forever. Thank you. Congratulations, Tim, and thank you so much, Supervisor Mandelman. And I just want to say congratulations to all of this afternoon's honorees. And Madam Clerk, this does conclude our 2.30 p.m. special order.